Okay, so today was the first time I have attempted to paint a jellyfish. I am not that familiar with jellyfish, but I must admit that after doing this project, I am more interested in them now. They're amazing little creatures. So, and when I was drawing them, I was looking at them as uh, shaped like sort of mushrooms shaped or umbrella shaped and um, when I painted this I used a couple of different uh, a red and a purple on this one um, I think yes I have a little watercolor brush um, it's a Faber, I think it came with a Faber Castell uh, paint set. But this, these paints, um, they're a mix of different colors that I've had uh, collected over the t over the years. I find the best are, that I like best are Winsor Newton, and I also like Dr. Martin's um, brilliant watercolor inks. And I do have some. Dr. Martin's ink here, but I didn't use it for this. And the next one I tried red, uh, a couple of reds and some purple. I don't like to mix too many colors because if you get too many colors together, you're going to get mud. But I was playing with the color. And um, I think my jellyfish are too dark in color. But after looking up uh, jellyfish on Google Images, I discovered that jellyfish come in many different colors and different sh sizes and they have different structures. So perhaps um, maybe mine are more imaginative and but that's all right. This is just um, an experiment to draw a jellyfish and I as I went along I realized I think jellyfish are more transparent and more um, um, you can see through them. They're, they're quite wonderful. And I didn't quite get that effect with this. But I was learning and I was playing with paint. And I was having fun. And with COVID and being shut inside and not having anybody except my dog to talk to <laughs> for quite a while. I think painting jellyfish uh, is a nice way to go through the day. And when I'm painting, I can think about all kinds of things. It's very meditative. So I added more salt, and then I dried it with a hair dryer. So that was really fast drying, but that's because I used a hair dryer. Because when it was dry, I was ready to go in and do the underside of the first jellyfish. That's looking at it from underneath. You can see its underside. And uh, I was putting that in. I just used a watery purple. And I didn't add salt to that. I just, I think I let it dry. And then I uh, started to go at the tentacles uh, for the red jellyfish, which was quite dry by then. Notice how the salt affects the paint. It gives it an interesting uh, texture. I like to use salt with watercolor. It's quite fun. So these little guys, I've noticed they have tentacles flying down from them around the edges of their little circle dome. And then in the center there's a squiggly body shape which sometimes can look like ribbons coming down and sometimes it looks like a lot of little streaks, straight lines of curly cues or um, I guess this is the body of the animal and I'm not sure of the structure or what it, how it works. It's fun to watch and um, I was just using my imagination a bit plus I had these jellyfish from Google Images to use as a reference, but I had also done some sketches, which helped a lot because 
that help me to understand more. Sometimes when you sketch things, you start to understand the, the makeup, how they're structured. So these centers of these jellyfish are quite interesting. I've still got a lot of work to do on these as I'm working here. I worked on, went on to the other one. I probably should have been moving my paper around more so that I could get more control over the little tentacles flying down. But uh, I wanted to keep it in the camera range so I didn't move my paper very much. But when you're doing a painting like this, you can move it around to make it easier. You can see how watery my palette is. But as obviously, I didn't have enough water because my jellyfish are a little bit too dark. However, this is an experiment, and I hope you will try to do jellyfish too. And you could make them any color you want because you're an artist. You can do whatever you want, right? So if you have a few watercolors around, even um, school, um, even the kind of watercolor you use at school, um, little tubes, they come in little tubes or they come in pans. I have a really nice Faber-Castell set of watercolors. I'm not using them here, but they are really beautiful to have. And they have a nice brush that comes with the set. So if you ever want to get a watercolor set, I recommend that if you're a student in an elementary school. And even an adult who likes to paint things um, would enjoy the children's set because I am certainly enjoying it. So I was making the center part of the body and then I was doing the outside tentacles for this little fellow. I still had a lot to do and um, I think I was listening to the radio or some music. I was thinking join that to the outside on one side and then the others have to come in on the other side. So there's a lot of little strings coming down. A lot of work to do on that little body. I've been to the Vancouver Aquarium to see the jellyfish there and they are so beautiful. They're orange and they move about like Oh, they're so magical to watch when they're swimming in the water. If you can ever, if you haven't seen a jellyfish swimming in the water, you have to see it. And I have this acrylic pen, it's white, and it's kind of handy for adding <clears throat> white, white effects, white highlights. Now, to tell you the truth, I didn't know what I was doing here, but I just wanted to add some kind of highlight and the white looked all right and made it look shiny so I added some more to each one um, they were quite dry by then I had dried them with the hair dryer again everything was quite dry when I went at it again with this it's a lovely thing to add to a painting when you've done it if you're doing a more decorative piece like um, like these little jellyfish are. Um, I added dots. They look like spaces um, in their body area. And I have discovered these um, shiny new little sets you can get of sort of metallic colors. And I thought I would add them to these jellyfish to see what happened. Now, I have to admit that I don't think it was necessary because it's really hard to tell what they're going to do until they dry. And when they dry, then if you hold it up to the light and move your piece around, you can see how they um, a sort of shiny effect to your art. Uh, but um, I don't think I needed to do this, but I was having fun and just playing. But... I think the next time I draw jellyfish, I will use more water in my paint and m make them more transparent if I can manage that. But these little fellas, um, on the, I used a damp um, cloth to uh, get rid of some extra paint there that I didn't like. Yeah. 
So I think I was almost finished with this. Sometimes uh, gel pens are really handy to add details to uh, watercolor. I have quite a number of white gel pens, but they were happened to be all dried up. And so my acrylic pen uh, has a thicker end and has less fine uh, tip, but it was all right. And then I pulled out some white Chinese paint, white Chinese white paint. It's opaque, and I thought I could add some more white to this. Sometimes you get a little tube of white paint with your watercolors to mix with watercolors and then you can get a opaque opaque effects and pastel effects with your paints but this is just a touch up like I wanted to enhance that edge to show that edge there a little bit and I thought I'll put a few dots around and see what happens it perks it perks them up again it adds a little bit of interest to this I think but um, I wasn't as satisfied with it, but then that's the way I am. Um, but I was doing this just to see the process of making a water uh, color of um, jellyfish. And the next time I make a jellyfish, I'm going to go for more water in the paint. And maybe uh, I'll try a lighter blue. And um, so that's pretty much it. I hope you try jellyfish too fun to a jellyfish today.